Hello everyone, w- welcome to a brand new episode on, on the podcast. Um, today I'm joined with Beth and it's going to be kind of a new series, but I, can't, I guess a delayed series because this will be the first episode and then the next episode will be probably in November time. <laughs> um, but it's, it's, it's a series called Doctor Who in Autism uh, Celebrations, um, kind of similar to um, Doctor Who in Autism, Autism series last year, just celebrations i guess celebrating autism and um doctor who so it's gonna be a great chat um and yeah so beth it's great to have you on today uh would you mind introducing yourself a little bit hi uh i'm beth um we met on tiktok i am a mental health nurse and a bit of a book nerd so i have two different channels on tiktok that we've met through okay do you, <laughs> do you, you know, like do you collect a lot of books then like and read them and that yeah, yeah, a lot of uh, fantasy and crime and thriller. Oh well, yeah, that's that's that is a little bit of Doctor Who then as well because it's got mm-hmm. fantasy, isn't it? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, um, the the last book I read was um, the Doctor Who lockdown book, but I didn't finish it because I got bored on the first page. <laughs> um, I yeah, think, I, I think... have the um, I have a book of fairy tales downstairs, which are fairy tale like time lord fairy tales that they've mentioned throughout the series that they tell to them when they're younger. So I do have that downstairs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I I do like to collect comics and stuff. I I like like I can concentrate more if it's like pictures and stuff rather than just mm-hmm. words. Mhm. Yeah, I think that's a bit of my autism in me. But there we go. <laughs> <laughs> um. Um. Because um, I, I, I remember, um, like, at school, um, and um, I would so, so, say, you know, like, in class, you, you re- you, everyone's reading the same book, and uh, the teacher says to you, well, she said to me, Mason, can you read the next page, please, or the next line? And I, I'm, sometimes I don't say anything. Sometimes, like, um, I just guess where, where we're at. And then it's just like, oh, we're not on the next page. <laughs> and then I just wing it. And then... Um, <laughs> The funny thing is, the reason I'm not concentration, it's probably because I'm bored of it. And um, the easiest thing is, I could just think about whatever I want. Maybe I'm thinking about Doctor Who or something like that. And then when the questions come along, they normally just say page 15, 16. Then I look at maybe a word in the question. And then I don't have to really mm-hmm. read the book at all. <laughs> I think. Um, best way of doing it. Yeah. But best way of doing it. Um <laughs> But um, I guess with with Doctor Who, so when when would you say you kind of it, it took your interest, like when you start watching it? So I started watching when I was about eleven. Uh, so I started in the Christopher Eccleston era, um, and watched Eccleston and then Tennant and then Smith and then some of Capaldi, and then went back so watched some of like Tom Baker and some others from like before. But yeah. yeah, I think probably like eleven is when it peaked my interest. <laughs> yeah, eleven was good. Um, it, 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 I, I like the laughter, like how funny it was. Um, mm-hmm. Like he, he, was, he was pretty funny, wasn't he? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, he was good. I quite like him. He's um the his like introductory episode is still one of my favorite episodes. Just him appearing, going run immediately. I'm attached. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I. I that is one of my favourites as well. Um, and I think it's one of his as well. <laughs> I think it's his favourite episode. Yeah. Um, um, but, um, yeah, I, I loved it. I, 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 last year, I actually went to where it was, the um, that, that the, the green where he was, um, he stood there. And it, it's, really, it's actually a really nice place um, because um, I went into the, the local church, um, which um, I spoke to a woman, um, old lady um and um uh, i i got to her and then she says to tell me all the knowledge about it like what how many days they were here and i was like oh that, that, that that's really cool um so yeah it it is oh. really nice place it's gotta be yeah. one of the probably one of my i think series four and series five probably one of my the favorite series, seasons yeah, yeah. Because um, series series five was just like great, I think. Um, like with like Amy, uh, Amy and Rory yeah. were really good. 
I think I don't necessarily have a favorite series, but I, there's like a a section in season four just after Rose. So Donna's in the picture a little bit just before Martha when you just you just see Tennant really vulnerable as the doctor and he like as the character he's just so vulnerable because he's just been through too much and obviously was in love with Rose so he's like really struggling to adapt now and then uh, Donna is bringing him back like "Uh uh-uh behave yourself come on be better so I I think I quite like that era yeah I I I did too because like like you had a storyline um, like and it was always kind of it was like it was kind of concluded. I think the Rose storyline just was there throughout um, until probably Journey's end kind of thing. Um, but yeah. it it was good. The, the reason I liked it was probably because I think series four has the most episodes. Um, I think and any new who season. Um, but but yeah, it you just got. Like you just felt like he was being the doctor, I think, um, in that series. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. Um, do do you have a favourite doctor? Oh. Uh, Tenant. Ten. Definitely Tenant. But I think Tenant is my favourite because of the time period that I watched it. Because uh, when Tenant was going through that loss and being really vulnerable. I'd just gone through something very, very similar. So then I think it kind of hit home a little bit and he, I just got a little emotionally attached to him. Yeah. Um, but I think runner up, I usually always say is Matt Smith, but the more I think about it, I think it's Capaldi. Yeah. Because I love Matt Smith. I think he's great, but I think Capaldi does a really good job of combining some of the main character traits of Tennant because he has Tennant's temper and he has his sort of determination but he has Matt Smith's humour whilst bringing in that Matt Smith forgets like he chooses to forget what happened when the Doctor obviously you know time war he chooses to forget what happened so I think he brings it all in quite nicely together and then Clara like rehumanizes him so I think he's a runner-up definitely yeah yeah they are very all they're all very good um Mm -hmm. like um well mine David Tennant, but I, I do like um, Matt as well. Like, I was very sad. Um, I was probably about 10, probably well, when he did regenerate. Um, mm-hmm. um, and then I, was, I wasn't I was as affected as the other regenerations I've watched, really. Um, like, um, I love the recent one. That, that's probably um, one of my favourites, like when Jodie Whitt regenerated to David Tennant again. Um, because um, I did watch the episode, and before it even started, I said to uh, people I'm watching it with, my day turn to be at the end, I'll turn you. I'll turn you, it's going to be at the end. <laughs> um, and then I was, they were, everyone's like, well, we'll we have to wait and see. And then I was like, there you go. <laughs> so I wasn't surprised, um, because the reason I thought that was because it will be a bit strange having a new Doctor go straight into the 60th anniversary, even though... David Tennant is the 40th Doctor, a completely different Doctor, but you're used to seeing him um, and I guess has more experience in Doctor Who than Shooty Getwell. But yeah. um, I know Shooty, seeing all the pictures and everything, Shooty Getwell looks like he's going to be a great Doctor. Yeah, I'm quite excited for him, to be fair. Yeah, yeah, because um, I think he's going he's gonna to have loads of different costume changes as well, looks of it, so it's going to be really cool. yeah. I've watched him in Sex Education and he is quite a talented actor. He does quite well at bringing in quite a lot of emotions and quite a lot of different quirks with himself. So I am I am quite excited to see how he takes this one. Yeah, I, th- I think he's... I can see of him having... Because like, in Sex Education, you can see um, like his humour and his seriousness. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, it's, it's going to be... I think it's going to be awesome. Um, I, I would love to see... Um, I can't wait to see what he does, but um, I think um, it just, when it was announced that, like, the companion, like, um, mm-hmm. who's going to be the companion, it just, it just gave me, like, back to, like, 2005, like, that, that kind of vibes and everything, like, it's, it's just She's very, very Rose Tyler. Yeah. She is very Rose Tyler, which I'm quite excited for because I'm interested to see because I've seen some of her acting before and she strikes me more of a Clara. So I'm interested to see how she brings in 
maybe aspects of old companions and then her new quirks too because I like when they do that yeah so it'd be quite good yeah because I it, it, I think like um when she was announced that she uh, I, I I didn't know who she was because um I, I I I don't watch like any of the soaps but um it's and then I and then I um of course you, you see what, what she does and like I mm-hmm. think she's very young but like she thinks she's the youngest companion so um yeah um I feel a bit uh old because I've never been older than it. I, I've, ne- I've never been older than a companion so and then that happens so. <laughs> yeah <laughs> um and like it's very mature for her age by the looks of it because she's only 18 so it's, it's um it's gonna be interesting to see what she brings yeah she makes me feel a bit ancient I'm not gonna lie <laughs> yeah yeah I turned I turned 25 this year so I'm like oh she is an infant <laughs> <laughs> yes it's crazy, but um, if she's getting on Doctor Who, she must be doing something right. Yeah, she is very talented, so I'm quite interested to see sort of their interactions and how they do together. Yeah, and what I want to see, I guess now, is um, more, like, more to the future. Like, you'll be looking at these characters and remembering them and not uh, going back, maybe getting old yeah. people back, even though they're good, like six anniversary episodes are probably their time to return um yeah um like i imagine there's going to be other people that we don't even know uh coming on there um like maybe matt yeah smith. i've seen some um i've seen some rumors floating about that matt smith might be because there was question whether or not his schedule filming um the house of dragon would sort of interfere but it looks like he will have some space in his schedule to maybe make a little bit of a cameo. So it be interesting to see if he does appear. Yeah, because I I think the the first um the, that that trailer that they made for the sixtieth, um I think that's only gonna be one of the episodes. Um I don't think they would be, I would don't think they would show it, all of it, all three parts yeah. of it, all, all three in one trailer. I think that's just the first one. Um, yeah. I think, and then. I don't know what's going to lead on to the other two, but um, it's going to be really interesting because the 23rd is not on a Sunday or a Saturday, so it's going to be like a, a weekday episode. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, which means... Um, I, I imagine it's going to be about an hour and a half long as well, like each episode. Uh, it's not going to be on like normal 45 minutes. Yeah, I think so, which will be good, actually. It'll be a nice little break from placement. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it 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 was just, it's something to enjoy, um, and then uh, it, it in your house you're like everyone be quiet, Doctor Who's on. Mhm. Yeah. Don't disturb me. I have snacks. Go away. Shut the door. Put your headphones in. I'm watching Doctor Who. <laughs> yeah, um, but I I'm just very much looking forward to seeing like the what what's to come because it, like I think there's gonna be more like um different shows related to Doctor Who now like, like like with um like like we had Tortured and Sarah Jane Adventures and maybe stuff like that which will be really yeah cool. yeah yeah um but like do 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 you have any like companions or anyone in Doctor Who that you have don't really like or or anything like you don't much like them so I re- I really don't like Martha I, re- I really just, she infuriates me. I know that the whole point of her was to sort of come in and like rehumanize the doctor and then she fell in love with him and that's like her, her whole like gist. She just annoys me. She's just whiny. And the second she appears on an episode, I'm like, ugh. Mm. I don't know what it is about her. I don't know what happens in the character arc that specifically annoys me about it. It just, every time I just get frustrated with her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and then i actually stopped watching capaldi when matt lucas and, and sort of billy were in the scene and it was that whole back and forth and i'm not quite sure the three of them just didn't quite sit right with me whenever yeah. i was like watching i got up to the episode i've forgotten its name now but the one with the smiles oh, the yeah. robots with the smiles on them I watched that one and that's the last one that I watched of Capaldi and I haven't watched Doctor Who since that point because it just, I, I don't know, it just upset me. Like, it just annoyed me for some reason that they didn't quite click for me. There wasn't, 
of the the doctor can function with multiple companions he's done it before we had the special episode where he had every companion and he functions very well if there's multiple companions because there's sort of different relationships with those companions in themselves and the banter between them or there's arguments but they just those those three together just don't sit right with me there's there's not a click there's like something missing from them yeah um i have then gone and watched the clip i'm not actually sure what quite happens but from what i understand billy loses somebody and she's having a bit of an argument with the doctor that's the most real i've seen them as companion and doctor yeah for her entire run yeah i i like with bill um i i liked um i i did like her but i just don't think she had her long enough in, in in it to kind of prove what she did because um, she was very short, like not long at all. Um, and um, I, I did. Um, I think Clara was on there too long. Um, I thought um, when yeah. when she was on there, um, so it was really hard um, because I think with the whole Clara story, I, I did really like her, uh, uh, but and then I just got bored because she was she was there too too long, um, and. Um, I imagine with a new companion, I, I, I'm intrigued to see how long that she has um, there. And like, um, it's going to be really interesting because uh, I think they have to be careful how long they keep a companion on. I think one season is long enough for a companion, but it depends what they do with it. Um, so um, because they bring a unit back, they could bring put companions in unit or or, or, or something like that. Um, yeah, I think. Um, I but, think. It would have been good if Clara had left. So the episode after Danny Pink died, oh, yeah. obviously there was there was that whole episode where they were trying to get him back and she was arguing with the Doctor. I think it would have been good if we had some sort of resolution to that argument for them and then that was sort of it. She just sort of walked away after that. I think that would have been a bit more true to Clara because they made quite a big deal out of the fact that Danny died and she'd made quite a big point to... Capaldi a couple of episodes before that you know like we are human but we're important like you're on our earth this is important to us and him disregarding Danny's death the way that he did it would have been more true to her character to walk away at that point than it would have continue on Yeah. which yeah. I think sometimes we do need a bad sort of character ending I think we do need a bad ending to the Doctor and his companion sometimes mm -hmm. because case we're getting quite a lot of the good ones and soppy ones but it might have been nice as a change to be have a companion actually go do you know what not enough like you you need to go and like reassess yourself enough yeah they need so, to um yeah. take some ideas from house of dragon i think with the brutal deaths yeah <laughs> honestly yeah <laughs> yeah because um but you don't see any for that on that doctor who like except for if someone's getting exterminated or perhaps or but you don't really see it, but it's by a companion. Um, like, I didn't really like Danny, really. I, I didn't really like, like him yeah. on there. I didn't think, I didn't see his purpose. I know he was yeah. Clara's boyfriend, but I didn't see why, why he had to be, he didn't really do anything. Um, or he, it, it was like moaning quite a lot of the time. Um, <laughs> I did like I the joke. I have similar um, opinions of Mickey. I have yeah. very similar opinions of Mickey. I do like that he ended up, staying in the alternate to be with his grandma i think that suits him very well but i just him being there at that point was just somebody else to throw a spanner in the works for rose and the doctor mm. I, I think he was a bit pointless too <laughs> but i'm i'm, I'm always very, very like that on the first episode rose I, I always get really confused with it because in an ideal world um like say a, a stranger because that's who the doctor was to Rose. It was a stranger that probably met for not long at all, um, under an hour of the episode. But it's, it's probably shorter than that <laughs> that they that they knew, and then <laughs> probably knew Mickey for years, like um, before. Um, and I think they were together for a while. And then the doctor turns up and says, um, "I can travel in time." And then off Rose goes. And then in an ideal world. I'll be thinking to myself, like, um, I don't really know this person. I'm leaving, like, like say to Mickey, um, I'm, I'm going now, bye. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have to address that quite a lot in mental health, actually, and specifically with 
people with autism, we do have to address that quite a lot because sometimes it's a case of you are presented with an opportunity and then some people can very much make a decision that they're going to partake in this activity forgetting that there's consequences to that there's things that need to come with that you need to be able to risk assess the situation and rose definitely did not rose just saw an opportunity and went bull in a china shop so i completely agree with you there actually so there needed to be a little bit of a conversation which is why i like that they brought in jackie because she very much was rose's voice of reason being like are you are you sure this is a good idea? You've known this guy like a week and you're getting in his spaceship and flying around the world like what are you doing? <laughs> so yeah. I like that they brought her in as like a voice of reason, but also she liked the doctor. She was just being a mum. She wasn't doing it to be like evil or to make Rose sort of like control Rose and be like, no, you can't do this. She was just the voice of reason to be like, maybe, maybe just rethink what you're doing. Maybe just, you know, yeah. you use that pretty little brain of yours. <laughs> and um the doctor did it wasn't very like re- reliant really like at the start there because um like especially with this S- S- slovene episodes like they what they said they were, they were they were gone five minutes and then a lot longer than five minutes so. mm-hmm. yeah i think some of that um because it, it it puts a bit of a question into the word of the doctor and how much you can actually trust it even for something as small as we're going to be gone five minutes and they're actually gone a year but i think some of that comes back with capaldi specifically the episode with clara and i've forgotten the other lady's name the blonde lady from unit and they they have the two buttons on the table oh yeah it very much comes back in there because then he's not very reliable because he's like nope this is your problem off you go (laughs) it was the same for the like the um the moon episode as well. He he he, yeah. he 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 left them, the doctor and like I would have think the doctor would be a kind of person who would do that, put people in those situations. Even if, even he might even know what it what's going to happen, but um, <laughs> it wasn't. I thought it was a bit of a stupid move for the doctor. There. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I agree with that. Because I didn't blame when Clara did have a go. At, I think it was after that. Um, like in the TARDIS, I had to go to the doctor. Yeah. I didn't blame that. Like, 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 like with mental health, that 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 would affect Clara in that situation. Yeah, definitely. So that is actually one of my favourite scenes. Is the argument in the TARDIS afterwards, where she's saying, you know, don't tell me to take the training wheels off of my bike, and don't ever tell me what I can and can't do. You are on our earth. You breathe our air. You respect us, and you don't throw me in the deep end like that. And I think that very much does look into what trauma can actually do to somebody. We obviously deal with a lot of trauma. Is like I, I deal with a lot of it as a mental health nurse. We deal with a lot. And I think there is a certain amount that can be said about that Doctor Who episode that you need to be able to give a person some leeway to figure some things out on their own and to think things through and to make their own opinion. But to do it safely and not to force them into that situation, which is why I really like that Clara then stood up for herself and was like, that is not okay. That's not something that we're going to do here not in my house like mm -mm. and i like that she did that because somebody needed just to put him in his place for a second and remind him who he is yeah because he was very um arrogant i think the the 12th doctor yeah so he he, like he wouldn't really get other people point points of views and and everything like that um and um i think that that trick do you remember that trick where that there was an episode where um I can't remember the reasoning, but there was like keys, and that the, the, like the car was throwing them into the fire as well. Um, uh, that, that, yeah. that episode. Yeah, I think um, it it revisited a trope that we've seen previously with the Doctor, where he went through the stage of he was I am a time lord and I do control everything, and he tried to save the the team that were on that spaceship that was supposed to end like the Adeline was Adelaide or what? Yeah, her name was Adelaide. She was obviously supposed to die, and then we come back, and she ends up taking her own life because he took the the sort of decision that fate had made for her away from her because he was a time lord and he did as what he wished to do. And I think it was very much a revisit of that, which is actually one of my least favorite episodes of Doctor Who because it's just not true to his character. That's very much revisiting the Doctor that performed the way he did in the Time War, and then spent sort of 
of the majority of Eccleston and Tennant's character arc moving past the time war and past the decision that he had made and letting him work through like grief and regret and make sure that he, you know, made the right decision. And then they threw that episode in there and it just sort of threw it out the window. Yeah. That... So I, d I hate that episode because every time it comes on, I'm like, oh no. Oh, the doctor's going to look like a bad guy today. <laughs> he didn't like, um, like, like, like I completely get what you mean with the, with the episode. Um, that, when I watched it, I was pretty scared of um, the monster in it when I was younger. <laughs> um, yeah, like I I appreciate that they did it to show grief because obviously he was grieving various different situations. So I understand that they did it as like a form of grief for him, but I think that they handled that wrong, yeah. very wrong. Um, and I think that David Tennant has even voiced some concerns about that episode previously because he's all he's always said that that's not his doctor in that episode. It's like he's a so, villain, really. Yeah, yeah, definitely. He's looking more and more like the master in that episode every time I watch it. He's not he's not looking like our doctor. Yeah, which I think is true to grief because you can go through stages where you obviously don't look like yourself when you're grieving something but I think that it was a very extreme way of showing that and I, I don't think that was necessary because it's weird because it, pretty much near, most of the episode he was like um, I, I can't do it. I, I, it, it it's already happened and it all suddenly he changed his mind um, and which he shouldn't have done he should have just kept to his word and, and gone but um, yeah, yeah. That, but even in the last episode, I thought he wasn't that friendly either. Um, like in his like the end of time part two with with Wilfred in the um in the box, I, I always get really annoyed about yeah. that because he's really mean to to Wilfred, um, and then all of a sudden lets him out, and almost like he don't care anymore. But what happens? Yeah, there? which as somebody who works with people who go through grief, that is actually a very accurate representation. So I am glad that they did it, but I can also understand why you get frustrated with that. But yeah. that is a very accurate representation because you go through, very often we see that they'll go through this intense, angry period and it's sort of, why is this happening to me? This isn't fair. I don't deserve this. And then there's that moment of acceptance and they've done the moment of acceptance wrong, which is why it's so frustrating to watch that scene. Because yeah. Tennant almost numbs and just sort of goes, whatever, it's going to happen either way, whatever. And that's not how we do things, because we do things sort of recognise your emotions and this is why this is happening and now we're going to go forward and there's none of that with him. He just numbs it out and goes, oh, whatever, come on then. And it, it's a bit of a shame, really, that they've done it like that. But I do appreciate that they've tried, because I know that throughout Doctor Who they do a lot of um, addressing serious issues, but in a in a good way. Um, the episode with Matt Smith and Amy Pond, what, the very first he takes her, um, and they have to make that decision whether or not they're going to kill the whale. There's, there's that scene in it where he's like, I don't want to hear from humans today. And that's also one of my favourite scenes because it's so real the frustration at other people's decisions and how that can have an overwhelming impact not only on you but the people around you I really like that they address that in that way and I think that that specific scene was done very well yeah I did, and there's I did another like yeah there's another in I can't remember the name of the episode but they're in the desert and there's that alien that sort of crash landed and has come in as a bit of a doctor type figure and then he ends up being quite evil and Amy brings Matt Smith down to earth and she's like mm -mm. no we don't just go around like issuing death warrants that's not what we do here we mm. work through this and we do this properly and I like that she was a very humanizing element to Matt Smith that I think he needed he did yeah because he just thought he 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 just had enough, I think, um, and, like with, with anything, and he didn't really know also a lot about just because he had, the others have said something. But you have got to give people a chance, um, really. So yeah. it, it it does relate to like um, people's experiences. So they yeah, they so I think a that. lot of Matt Smith's temper and a lot of Matt Smith's questionable moments have very much come from a direct opposition to David Tennant's because you see David Tennant as this character who's going through grief and regret and he's 
venting that in anger and trying to take control of the situation and he does that wrong and Matt Smith is doing the same but Matt Smith's doing it whilst trying to forget everything that happened and ignore that part of him so you see the two opposite ends of grief and I like that they both show it very differently it makes both of them look questionable at points but I like that they do it very differently they do definitely um and like with Martha and the doctor I I can't understand if people like it and the people don't because I can understand the both ways. Um, I can under, like understand maybe the Martha side, like she moans a lot, she's very jealous. Um, but um, I guess that doesn't help. Dave, uh, like the temp doctor's calls by take t- 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 like always talking about it's it's like it's kind of like you're in a relationship, really, isn't it? And you you, you go to your partner and they always talk about their ex. And that 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 that, that, that kind of maybe relates to what Martha is feeling like because Martha is in love with the doctor, um, and the doctor yeah. doesn't realise that the doctor has no intentions of thinking that, um, because in an ideal world, they he would be with Rose, um, but that that all got stopped and everything. So I understand like how that could be like the the doctor taking places where Rose was and everything like that. So. He, uh, which didn't we didn't really see that really to us people watching it, but they they went to the same places. But yeah, you can you can get both sides. But um, I think um, I think Ma- Martha did all right when she went to unit, and she did all right then. And yeah, um, she uh, she's uh, probably still there now. <laughs> I do like that she went to unit. I think that that gave the doc a bit of a wake-up call because he'd obviously blundered into a life she'd fallen in love with him which I don't agree ever should have been an arc but here we are Mm. she'd obviously fallen in love with him and then chosen to leave for herself and I love that she chose to leave for herself but unfortunately because she'd fallen in love with him the way the doctor then treated her because he didn't realize that she was in love with him was wrong obviously can't have been helped by him because he didn't realize but the way that he treated her wasn't great so then to come back and see actually she's joined unit now and this is because of you and because of what you've shown her this is the after effects of when you leave somebody after the way that you've treated them i think that was a good moment in doctor who because it made the doctor sit and think actually crap like the the, there are consequences to my actions time lord or not and i am having effect on these humans that i think are so precious to me so i think it was good that she joined unit plus she's just she's a great little soldier in there i love her we stand a soldier (laughs) Yeah, she's a very good soldier, um, and like it, I think, like what we'll, we'll, Kate Stewart, like the leader of Unit, I think she's like like a saint by the looks of it, because she, she's uh, like I always think she's gonna get killed off or something, but she always she's just like yeah, she I think since Matt Smith, like um, she's seen every single Doctor, probably they do tell as well because in the day of the Doctor, yeah, um, but. Like she, she's seeing all of them now she's gonna be seeing shooty on the, the next series so um i wonder if like um like um they all have martha or or as unit or or something like that it, um but yeah it, it's gonna be interesting because um i guess one of my favorite companions other than probably rose would be donna because I, I i love donna um because i like the fact that she said no i think on, on the, like it straight away like most companions would say yes and then she didn't and then she went to try and find the doctor and the partners in crime and yeah. I love that I, I love that she she tried to find the doctor um really um and they I like the relationship yeah. because it's not like a love story it's just like a like a really good friendship definitely I was just gonna say that I think it's really refreshing to have somebody that's just the doctor's friend they're not interested in him romantically they're not interested they just want to be his friend and I think that they did the right thing bringing her in directly after Rose and then taking her away again. Because yeah. I don't think she was the right one to humanise the Doctor. I think Martha was the right one to sort of bring him through his grief and bring him back down again. And then we have Donna come back. Yeah. And I love their chemistry together. They are so funny. It's going to be really interesting to see like how mm-hmm. Donna's come back with like the memory and everything like that. So it's going to be interesting to see how it's Donna back. Yeah. Yeah, I also like that they have done a bit of um, somebody, there's some rumours going around that they've done sort of a bit of a memoir to her granddad, 
which I like that because obviously he, the actor himself is no longer with us anymore. So I, I am going to quite like it if they have like maybe a video message that he'd film for the doctor or maybe there's a phone call with Donna. I will like it if they can bring him in and memorize him a little bit because he was a big part of Doctor Who for us. He was our granddad at the time. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be really interesting. Um, it's going to be interesting if there is any anything in the episode. Um, mm-hmm. Like, if there is, like, it'd, it'd be nice, like, if the Doctor, like, d- 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 in, in the TARDIS, and Donna says, um, like, I want to go back to where he l- l- looks out, like, at night. So, so something like that yeah. um, would be nice. Um, but I don't know if, 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 will they say? Because, of course, he, he was alive at the time when they were filming some bits, so... Um, does, yeah. So perhaps they they might not even die um, in the episode. They, they they might just do like at the end of the episode in remembrance of Bernard Cribbins, perhaps. Yeah. Yeah, because I know they very much left it that he was responsible for making sure that Donna didn't remember. So I wonder if they might be going to pull some of that in, because yeah. if he's no longer with us, he can no longer prevent Donna from remembering. So I wonder if that might come in, and then we're going to see her sort of lose all of her memories again afterwards. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see how they do it for sure. I hope I hope I hope Donna doesn't forget again. Not again. <laughs> well maybe they'll find a way to do it because I know that it was there was a few that said it was very similar to Rose when Rose had sort of taken in the time vortex and then obviously destroyed the Daleks and everything. The doctor was able just to kiss it out of her, but because Donna had like fused with this hand, it was different. But it would be interesting to see if secretly he's maybe been working on it to see if he could ever unfuse that and he could help fix her so that she wouldn't have to forget she could remember everything. But I don't think that Donna needed to forget everything. I, I, I thought that, like at the time that all Donna needs to forget is what she just done. Um, like yeah. She didn't have to forget all the, the rest of them. Um, but perhaps they did that because like, they might remember it, um, what just happened if I if remember the Doctor. Um, yeah, but, but um, what what I think is going to happen is I I, I think well, what's going to happen is um, Shooty is going to be going in and out, like maybe of the Doctor, like they're going to keep switching in, in the episode, yeah. and then um, let, let's say Neil Patrick Harris is playing the Toy Maker, which is, looks pretty likely, um, that mm-hmm. uh, the Toy Maker it pops them out of each other, so so they're like they're not switching all the time, and then Shooty's in it, um, but I don't. It's going to be interesting to see how much shooting is actually in the episode um, Yeah. as well. Um, because I am very much looking forward to see what your TARDIS looks like. Um, I would like a purple TARDIS, uh, but um, I'm not sure. Purple would be good. Yeah. Purple would be very good. I'd, I would hope that they sort of demodernise it a little bit. Because I think the TARDIS is a very much suited their Doctor, but it's becoming... It's starting to look like the inside of a Dalek ship at this point like there's there's it's getting a bit too modern I think they maybe just need to take it down a notch and maybe just take yeah. it a little bit closer back to David Tennant's TARDIS because his TARDIS was chef's kiss yeah <laughs> it, I did really like his TARDIS um and I don't mind them TARDIS, changing the TARDIS a little bit during maybe a certain doctor's era but um I, I did really like that TARDIS because it looked really big it looked really loads of room um, like in the, the others, I think Matt Smith and Peter Capaldi look very similar. They are very yeah. similar TARDISes. Um, but it's going to be really interesting. I would like to see more episodes in the TARDIS. Um, yeah. like like I think we had one with Matt Smith, like the journey, the center of the TARDIS, stuff like that. It'd be nice, more just in depth episodes of yeah, find where the swim pool is maybe. <laughs> yeah, I like the trickery ones as well we had the um oh what was he the amy the, choice the, one the, 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 the dream lord yeah the yeah with the dream lord yeah i really liked that one because that one it messed with your head a little bit and you were like oh okay and i'm hoping we have at least one scary episode because i love the scary episodes like we had um are you my mummy um, and we've had the silence when the silence first came in they were very scary so i'm hoping we get maybe another scary one too because i think it's been a while since we've had a proper good creepy doctor who episode yeah they never need to make it more more scary don't they um yeah it, it needs to be like a, a horror like like i don't know like just really really scary but um it's gonna be mm-hmm. oh, like 
most scariest of episodes. I like that dull episode with Matt Smith. I was I, that was pretty creepy. Yeah, that one creeped me out definitely. That I was I just they kept moving and I was like, oh, they're, mo- uh-huh, they're moving. They're yeah. moving. <laughs> that one was definitely very weird. Yeah. I was always saying to like my parents when I was watching a top episode, that's not gonna to me, is it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to turn into a doll, but but um, but also the um, the, the, the the like the girl on the fireplace, the the clockwork monsters under the bed, um, mm-hmm. and the under the bed episode because I think most of us when you're growing up, you do feel there's something under there when you're sleeping. So I yeah, think they did that really good. Yeah, for sure. They need to do more kind of episodes, maybe more scary episodes. Um, um. Like new villains as well. I would say I would like to see more new villains because we haven't really got much new villains recently. Yeah, we very much they've been sticking to sort of ones that we already knew in the master very much. I'd, I'd like to see sort of maybe a new because when they brought the silence in, we hadn't had anything like the silence before that at all, not even in the slightest. And then they came in and just messed everything up and screwed with everybody's head. So I'd love a new one to come in like that. That's like real messes up the situation and can like manipulate the minds really well. Yeah, because they've, they've, be they've done really good ones. They've done like a, a forgetful one. They've done not thinking one. They they they, they like doing ones with the mind. So, um, mm-hmm. like um, it'd be it's gonna be really. Int- I would like to see maybe an alien companion at some point. Um, yeah. as well. I think that'll be good. Yeah, definitely. Because I know the doctor really likes his um really likes his humans, but I think the closest we've had to like a non-human companion is probably K-9, which K-9 is great and I love K-9, but we could maybe do with an alien because yeah. it just to sort of I know the doing the sort of the CFX and the makeup and stuff would be a lot but if you did it sort of mild, <laughs> don't maybe paint them blue, but you could have like a mild alien come in and be his companion every time and I think that would be really cool Yeah, that, 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 that would be really cool, um because like like w- with autism, I think like I could see it in a lot in like traits of like Matt Smith's doctor, like with um really kind of he flaps his hands around a lot and plays around. Mm-hmm. He plays he plays around with his TARDIS probably more than maybe the other, some of the other doctors. Um, yeah, like with the controls and stuff like that, and, and talks to it a lot. So um, I kind of like like that kind of relates to maybe autism a little bit. Does. Yeah, so he had a lot of stims um, that we had noticed. Like he did his, his hyperfixation on like bow ties and fezzes, I thought was very, very cool, and the braces. And he did a lot of stims when he was inside the TARDIS, like his little hand thing he would do, yeah. which I thought was quite cute. So he had quite a lot of autistic traits sort of shining through during that episode. And I know we had some with Capaldi in a very different way because obviously, with people who have autism, sort of processing and understanding emotions is one of the biggest things that we try and assist with because it's the hardest thing that most people with autism try and navigate around. And I think Capaldi showed a lot of that because there was a lot of times where there was an emotion going on, especially with Clara, and he just didn't understand why she was feeling that way and what it is that he'd done wrong. And I think that that was a really good sort of expansion into understanding human emotions from the perspective of a doctor who could potentially be autistic like there's there's a lot of crossovers there and I really like that so I'd like to see them maybe delve into that and maybe look a bit more because there's been like slithers in episodes but they, they could maybe be a little bit more of an episode on overstimulation because I think that's very important to recognize during autism is the different things that can overstimulate somebody and can cause them to potentially have what we would call a meltdown yeah I think that would be really important to explore in Doctor Who and maybe see how he would deal with being overstimulated and stuff like that because he very much previously, when overstimulated, has gone to anger. So I'd like to see them explore the other options that happen in a meltdown. Like, we can go non-verbal. There can be a variety of different things. I'd like to see them explore that in a different avenue than just anger because there's so many more ways that they can take that. Yeah. Yeah, it, uh, it, it it would it, it it would be a really good way to to do yeah. it. Um, and I think like another mental health kind of thing I, I saw um in Doctor Who is uh, it was the end of the, the girl in the fireplace episode in the TARDIS where 
and the doctor is reading a letter from M Madame de Pompadour um, that, that that he got. And um, he's re while he's reading it, Rose says to the doctor, you're right. And he says he's always all right. And obviously he's not. He just don't want to say it. And um, yeah. he, he doesn't want to express his feelings, but it can relate to a little bit with autism a little bit as well. But um, yeah, I'm going to help because he, he, he doesn't want to share um, because what has been said and, and everything. Yeah. So the Doctor does display, there's a few episodes and there's quite a concurrent theme that the Doctor is depressed. That's quite an obvious theme that he's got going on there, but there's certainly after Rose, um, there's there's certainly some signs there of PTSD too, which I like that they've brought those in because I think that's an important diagnosis to try and explore. Yeah. I think that PTSD can come with a lot of side effects and so can depression and those especially when somebody has autism and then suffers a traumatic event and can have PTSD and depression and things like that I think it's important to explore how they might manage that because having PTSD myself I'm not autistic but I deal with triggers and I can deal with flashbacks very differently to how somebody would with autism who doesn't understand what emotion it is that they're feeling so if they don't understand that emotion if that's then triggered, we have a whole different meltdown on our hands and it's not just a PTSD one. Definitely. So I think them exploring his various mental health conditions that he very clearly has going on, I think is a good way of looking into it, is that he does it, they do it so subtly that it's just a nice flow of, okay, we're feeling this emotion and this is how we're going to handle this today. Yeah, it, it, it is like there's so much there which everyone, like different communities people can relate to. And yeah. there's so there's so much out there that they're doing now. Like they've got that they're exploring different paths and 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 uh, putting actors out there who are in those communities. Um, and it, it's really good that they're doing that because it just raises awareness and acceptance. And I think Doctor is quite good with doing that. Um, but yes. the, they always have to be you like with any show. You have to be really careful what you're actually addressing mm -hmm. and 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 how and how you're doing it because. You don't, you don't want to do it um, wrong. Yeah. I think Doctor Who deserves a lot more recognition for doing it, though. Yeah. So one of the first, um, like, film adaptations that we've seen that very much presented mental illness was maybe Iron Man 2, because Iron Man's panic attacks that he has, it might be Iron Man 3, actually, but the, the film that he has the panic attacks in after going into the portal in Avengers. That's a very real depiction of anxiety. Um, and I actually saw that when my panic attacks were getting really bad. So I very much related to him. And he's a very much an emotional hyperfixation for me. And I think that that film gets a lot of credit for displaying mental health. And then we had quite a lot of films and TV series that displayed it afterwards that got a lot of credit. But when in actuality, Doctor Who's been doing it for years previous to that, and they're not really acknowledging it because it's, you know, the geeky sci-fi film with the Daleks like they're not really acknowledging that that they are actually looking at serious issues they're just doing it in a really light way so that it can be digested by the viewers without being too heavy and I, I think they do definitely deserve more recognition for that yeah they do do it quite well and and quite which not everyone will realize um like it's not like you say it, 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 it's more than like just a tv show um really, because people are all ages are watch it, um, and it, mm -hmm. it, it, you can, you just relate, like, um, what people are doing, um, and, like, everyone is different, so, and every doctor is different, they're all, and they're not going to be the same, um, because, obviously, we're, if we're all the same, we're going crazy, aren't we? <laughs> exactly, it would be very boring, and I would be out of a job. Yeah, you know, you know what we're saying, so, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But there'll be no point of talking with the, the, the we, we'll, we'll be reading people's minds <laughs> I think in saying that though I think that there's some diagnosis that I'm hoping doctors who stay away from hmm. because there's quite a few that are very prominent on social media at the minute and doctor who are quite good at picking up what's quite prominent on social media obviously we're getting a lot of LGBTQ representation we're getting a lot of autism and on the spectrum representation there's some depression and anxiety but there's there's sort of some there's definitely some diagnosis I'm hoping they'll leave alone because sort of dissociative identity disorder and borderline personality disorder they they need to leave those alone because there's 
depictions of that that are very inaccurate across the board. And I think if Doctor Who do it wrong, it's a show that could significantly suffer if they were to do it wrong. So I think they should keep doing what they're doing, but just just stay in your lane. <laughs> yeah, you, you also got to be careful about the sort of stuff you address. Um because like yeah. you've, you've you've just got to be like really careful. Like um I think they've done really well. Um I know they did um within the 13th Doctor's story, um there was a character who played a, a dyspraxia character, um where um they I think they needed to do that a little bit well, well, in my opinion, which um, I think they did really well with ad- addressing a character that has dyspraxia because I didn't know what it was and, and until I saw it and a few other people who dyspraxia. Some I've got mixed opinions about. Something it's okay, so um, it's just I didn't yeah, think yeah. that like the, the I think the character as a whole didn't have a good storyline and didn't have enough um, to kind of yeah. do it. So. Um, I think that they do do stuff quite well, but m- maybe just address it a little bit better sometimes. Um, yeah, but, but um, but yeah, like they do have to stay away from stuff stuff because it could offend people quite easily if they are being. It, it could, it, yeah. yeah. And if they did something as serious as sort of a personality disorder, or say for whatever reason they decided they were going to look into schizophrenia, I think that there's you could portray that in the best way that you could absolutely possibly do it and you would still manage to upset part of that community so i think some things are just safer to stay away from um specifically as well if we're looking at like a different avenue if they start looking at sort of asperger's and asperger's syndrome obviously is quite serious for some um if they if they do that wrong it's going to look so bad. Like, there's a show that's done it quite well. I know that a lot of people say he's autistic, but Sheldon Cooper would fall under Asperger's on Big Bang Theory, and he's done quite well. But if they did it a little, even just a millimetre more extreme than how they did it, it would have been borderline offensive. So Doctor Who just need to stay in the lane and go a bit steady and just, you know, do it the way that they've always been doing it. And I think that Mm. they'll do a really good representation all around. Yeah. Because there, there is some shows out there like that do autism and stuff that are good and some are just not good. Um, yeah. Like, like, like for example, um, like a show called The Undateables, um, and I, 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 I think that's not great. Like in the name itself, <laughs> like it, yeah. it, uh, even maybe some people might not be autism on there. Just like anyone, like pretty much just says they're undateable, which <laughs> people go on there. But I, I, I don't think that that's an entirely a good show. Um, that there are certain other things uh, shows out there. Um, that th- there was one that's recently. Ju- it's called uh, Mind Your Autistic Brain, I think, and that's actually pretty good. Yeah. That that actually um, does that pretty well. Um, but yeah, but we have, have to be really careful in mental health. Yeah, we have to be careful in mental health with some films too. There's um, the split with. Um, the very famous actor obviously from X-Men that film riles me in so many different ways it's unreal Hmm. they very much present him as having sort of multiple personality disorder which we don't call it that anymore there's Hmm. it's dissociative identity disorder now and they've sort of split it up because we're having quite a big change through mental health where things are being recategorized Um, so PTSD and borderline personality disorder have just been put together under the umbrella of emotionally unstable personality disorder. So we're having quite a big change categorically throughout. Um, but as that film has sort of come out, I've, I've sat and I've watched that and it, it just grinds me a little. I know that it was supposed to be exaggerated and the storyline is supposed yeah. to be extreme. And he's, you know, he's been highly, highly praised for that role. But any of us in the mental health community have sort of looked at that and gone, oh, oh, that was a, that, oh, okay. You know, you didn't need to do it that way. <laughs> yeah, and now, now you mention it, I can see where you're coming from, um, because, um, like, um, very good acting, though. I've got to say to the actor, like, doing all those different personalities, but I can completely understand from a mental health perspective. Um, yeah, he's absolutely incredible. I think they just missed out sort of a key part of it, like... Um, typically within dissociative identity disorder the alters don't tend to know the other alters and we don't tend to have people with DID who have memories of when the alters are fronted and then in this film he obviously does and then we've got other people on social media now saying that they do remember 
what's happened with the different alters. So then we're having to relook at how we're assessing things and going, well, actually, is it logistical that you could remember between your alters? And I, we don't think it is. So then it becomes a bit of an argument between ourselves and it's just, it's just a bit messy, really. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 like, it's like anything, really, isn't it? You've just got to be really careful um, about things you do in films and TV shows. It's, it's, it's really important and and you've got to be like you, you just got to be careful like 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 I think after split they did a film related to the um I think they called it the the glass I think they called it and the guy from split went in there as well um but um you had that other guy who was the guy who, who who's not breakable as well was in that as well yeah. but um but yeah but you've got to be very careful um about yeah yeah there was a, a crime netflix series as well the 27 faces of billy milligan it was called i think and he he was um a murderer but he had been recognized to have dissociative identity disorder hmm. and for the time period that it was in they didn't believe that dissociative identity disorder was actually a condition they at the time called it multiple personality or split personality disorder and they didn't believe that it was sort of real and they didn't they, they couldn't fundamentally agree with the fact that the brain could fully switch into another altar and now we are recognizing that it is in fact a thing but we don't have enough research to help them or to diagnose them properly because we don't really know what we're looking at and that tv series sorry netflix series used a lot of news outlets and a lot of reports made at the time and it just painted it in a very very bad light so a lot of us in the community sort of cringed and then went online and we were all like no we see you we still see you we see you as people we don't see you as this bad guy we see you yeah so i think if you have the right communities on tiktok and other social media platforms i think that there's the right support out there if something does do it wrong like if doctor who did a presentation wrong we could come in and be like uh-uh we don't see you like that it's okay you're still yeah. safe it's all right <laughs> yeah i think um I think with Russell, he, he does see, he's pretty, um, he likes to do stuff like that, like with, yeah. uh, like you see other things that he's done, um, but like stuff like that, um, I think he, um, he does, he does really well with that kind of stuff, um, and it's good. He does. It, it, it's good that, like, you know someone that's going to come in and then I know what they're doing, so, <laughs> um, but yeah. if we do have to advise any of them, I'm sure we'll, but to find a way to get in contact with them, but um, um, but but yeah, it, it, it'd be nice to see more things that haven't happened yeah. before. Um, because um, like some people won't even know, like 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 um, if you're not in that field or you don't have it yourself, you're not gonna um, you can't expect everyone to know. But it, it is like when they do it mildly. So like, I I wouldn't want an autist like the doctor to admit on screen that is autistic because that wouldn't look very good um yeah. like um like like i see traits that a lot of autistic people take, can relate to but you, yeah. you, just, you just want to be careful don't announce that you are autistic because for one the doctor is an alien and it'll probably come a really offensive um um really but yeah you just like we say just be careful but uh but yeah yeah just got to be a little bit careful, but um, other than that, I think it, it looks pretty good. Like um, the the future for Dot Two. So anyway, because yeah, I did think fear so. it. Very excited. Did fear it. Um, um, at the end of Jodie's kind of era. Um, but um, and then I think that that's when Russell D Davis come in and decide. Oh, I've got I've got help. But I've got to help him. Yeah. Um, yeah definitely it's going to be very, very good I'm very excited to see where they take this yeah um yeah 60 years this year I can't I can't, I can't, I can't believe it um it's it's coming up um that it's 60 years um it's, it's insane it is insane um and we've only had technically I think we've had 16 doctors if you include the uh the Joe Roof doctor which was in my eyes, that 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 doctor, um, you didn't really ever find out who the doctor was. <laughs> um, but um, but yeah, with so many doctors, like there's gonna be probably loads more uh, in the next. Um, mm -hmm. Can we get to the hundredth anniversary? What that means gonna be there? <laughs> I think they do need to be careful how many they have. 
Mm. I know that they've they've implemented different things within the law so that there can be more than however many generations there is supposed to be. But I think they should be careful with how long they keep this going because at some point it's going to get ridiculous and the doctor should have, you know. Yeah, it, 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 you, you do think that, don't you? You do think, it, it's a, when it, is there going to be a time where, like, when's the doctor going to go? Because, like, when it gets to number 100, um, like that, that, that is going to be... Um kind of strange because like um the doctor could get unless they do like a reboot perhaps at some point like they they repeat mm-hmm. and then they just start over but and then you think what'd be the point of that like what, what, with the last lot so it's gonna be interesting how long it does go on for but the longer the Definitely. better or even if they do stop it at some point they have all these different spin-offs with certain characters that have been in the show perhaps so they can still keep it going uh if they eventually do stop the actual show but just have these different sp- shows around it uh, kind of like marvel yeah, doing at the moment. um but um be careful not to change it into marvel <laughs> yeah definitely yeah yeah um but beth before we go do you do you have a like a moment doctor you relate to or a favorite quote uh, in doctor who i do have a favorite quote and it's said by our very lovely rose tyler um you don't just give up. You don't just let, let things happen. You make a stand. You say no. You have the guts to do what's right, even when everyone else just runs away. Yeah. I really like that quote. I think that can be related to in so many different areas of life for a person and so many different experiences. And I just, I really like that she gets to say that. That is a good quote. I do really like that one because, like, like you say, um, just reminds me, it's, it's in the... Um, it's in the chip shop, isn't it? That 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 mm-hmm. that scene and parts of the ways. Um, which um, I love that episode. It, it was great that she was so determined to get back to the doctor, but not only yeah. she prepared to die for the doctor as well. So it 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 was um a very good quote. Um, yeah. But, um, but I, I find all these quotes in Doctor Who really relate to us. Um, personally, as well. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. But, um, but yeah, thanks, Beth. It's been really awesome speaking to you about mental health, autism, <laughs> Doctor Who, all different things as well around, around that. Um, but but yeah, it's, I, I, ho- I hope you've enjoyed it. Yeah, definitely. Thank you for having me on. <laughs> definitely. Thank, thank you. And, and thank you to everyone else who um, has decided to watch this or, or listen. Um, this will, uh, this is part of, I guess, the celebrations of Doctor Who anniversary this year and it's going to be really cool and we can't wait to watch the the anniversary specials this year and whatever happens in the years to come which looks really exciting but thank you everyone and is have a nice rest of your day